All right, hello everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. Uh, as you see, our topic today is going to be actually about this uh, virus thing, and then there's a video I'm going to play it. Uh, by the way, I did load a video which many of you say this is about uh, this Fifi he called me three years ago, but I'm not sure really if this is him or not. I don't care, but if it's him, it's him. Go watch it and laugh. I put I, I put it there because it's kind of funny, so I decided to put it there. Now. The virus of Corona, which is extremely supposedly dangerous and affecting even the stock market, affecting even the price of gas, gas price is going down. Uh, you know, uh, health insurance is going up. I mean, look, look how the world gets so scarce so easy. Very easy. Uh, economy can collapse just because of a little tiny creature. It's called virus. But what you cannot imagine that the first time they discovered this virus, it was in Mecca brother where in mecca in saudi arabia 80 percent of this disease or virus was discovered and confirmed in the kingdom of saudi arabia specifically during the hajj to mecca Now, the question here, why Allah would like to do that to the Muslims? Why Allah will do that to the Muslims? Because remember the Quran, the yellow pages of Muhammad says, no bad thing happened to any human being except by the will of Allah. Let us open the yellow pages of Muhammad so we can see if this is true or not. And those are believers who they are coming to worship Allah. Then how this disaster happened by the will of Allah? And why Allah want to spread Corona between the Muslims who they are kissing the black stone, which is his favorite stone and it's his right hand? Why Allah want to do that to the Muslims? And now if Corona really spread, widespread, because of Allah, Mecca, then all government in the world, they should ban the practice of the ritual Islam. Because almost in every country in the world, there is Muslims. So if every country, only 10 people went to do Hajj, just 10, then people will bring back the virus and the virus will spread all over and as you see obviously Allah is the one who want to damage the world Allah is a crazy guy he decided to make a virus now I challenge the Muslim to say it's not Allah who created the corona and as you see the verse no it doesn't say that it does say that it says no kind of a calamity calamity happened to you occur to you except by the leave of Allah nothing will happen to you nothing and to make it more funny Muhammad he claimed that such such a disease will never enter actually less dangerous disease like he called a ta'un the plague he said the plague will never enter those cities Actually, he mentioned before the city of Al Medina. That plague will never enter it. And you can go right now, search on Google, and you see how many times the plague killed tens of thousands in Saudi Arabia, including Medina City and Mecca. Which means, again, Muhammad is a false fraud prophet. Do you see it? This is Sahih al-Bukhari. This is Sahih al-Bukhari. Two things will not enter the city of Al-Madina. The Jal, which means the false messiah, which is funny statement, the name, or the plague. 
That's mean those cities are, you know, protected by Allah. The plague is a virus. The corona is a virus. But everybody who live in Medina or Mecca, they get infected by all kind of viruses. So Muhammad is a big fat fraud, proven officially to be true. Now speaking about the fraud, I just saw a video made by a brother David Wood. And uh, uh, I'm sure David Wood, he will not mind for me to play his video. Just to show you the fraud of Islam. The fraud of Islam. This is the video of... Uh, uh, let me see, hold on. The video of uh, Brother David. Just to give you an example about how they fool people. Okay, let us put his video so we can hear it. Very good video actually of David. Uh, and I think I made videos before getting those people busted. But I like the video David he did. It's simple, easy, and the bust was big. Watch carefully. Posted a video showing that the top Muslim YouTube channel, Merciful Servant, was lying to viewers and claiming that Muhammad is the God of the Bible. Since the Merciful Servant channel is about to reach 3 million subscribers, this seems like a good time for a quick update on the channel's deification of Muhammad. In case you missed the video back in June, I'll give a quick recap. Surah 7, verse 157 of the Quran claims that the Torah and the Gospel contain prophecies about Muhammad. Muslims have had 14 centuries to find these prophecies, but the Bible passages that they point to as prophecies of Muhammad only work if no one bothers to actually read the passages. So, Muslims will go around telling people that Deuteronomy 18.18 18 is a prophecy about Muhammad. It says that God is going to send a prophet like Moses. This must be Muhammad. Eventually, someone reads Deuteronomy 18.20, same passage, just two... Guys, is the sound of David coming clear? Is the sound of David coming clear? Some people are saying no sound. I'm not sure what this is about. Is the video sound is coming clear? I'm talking about David video, not my voice. Is David video coming clear? All right. Okay, good. So if you have a problem, that means it's from your side. Please don't complain. Refresh your page first before exit, come back and see what's happening within you from your side. All right. Verses later, which declares that Muhammad can't possibly be a true prophet. Muslims will go around telling people that John 14, 16 is a prophecy about Muhammad. It says that someone is coming after Jesus. This must be Muhammad. Eventually, someone reads the entire passage and points out that John 14, 16 is about the Holy Spirit and that by claiming that the passage is about Muhammad, Muslims are calling Muhammad the Holy Spirit, thus deifying Muhammad and committing shirk. So, Muslim apologists, in order to defend what the Quran says, have to keep switching passages. They find a passage and claim it's about Muhammad until people actually read it then Muslim apologists move on to another passage. One of the latest so-called biblical prophecies of Muhammad is Isaiah chapter 42. But as usual, in order to make this passage sound like it's about Muhammad, Muslims have to get pretty creative. And by creative, I mean creative with the truth. Yeah, like this. If you open the Bible and you read the book and I pick up, and you will find an idea. It is that written clearly that the Prophet Muhammad is the in, 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 in the Bible. This is how they get creative. I'm just trying to help David Wood about how they creative, how they create. If they have to be very creative, tell us more, David. And by creative with the truth, <laughs> I mean outright deceptive. 
Here's a clip from the <coughs> video I posted back in June. The prophecy that supposedly proves that Muhammad is a true prophet is found in chapter 42 of the book of the prophet Isaiah. The narrator of the video tells us that this is a prophecy about a very special person. God starts the chapter by drawing our attention to a very special person that he will send. He describes this very special person, brother. This is very special person. Okay? This is very special person. We will discover after a few seconds that this is a Prophet Muhammad. He's a very special person. Yeah, he's the only one who get married from children. Special person. He is the only one who accused his cousin to rape him. Special person. He is the only one who fly in the top of flying donkey. Nobody saw him. He is the only one who get bewitched. Special person. He is the only one who imagined himself having sex, but he did not. He is the only one who will be bewitched by hair, but you know, no proof. He, he's a special person. He is a very special person. And Allah gave him a special privilege about his private part, about how many women he will sleep with them, about do, he don't pay money for women to sleep with them, about the best of the booty. He is a very special person. And now we will see in the Bible that he's a very special person. Let us go a little bit forward, backward. Backward, not forward, backward. Forward, backward. Yeah. The narrator of the video tells us that this is a prophecy about a very special person. God starts the chapter by drawing our attention to a very special person that he will send. <coughs> he describes this person. I, I cannot, I cannot, I cannot keep my mouth shut. I love it when he squeezes himself. It's a very special person. Like this guy is making it like, you know, like it's like a car going up up the hill and like the engine is not functioning something. There's a cork in the butt. And, like, and then a very special person. It says that. It says that in the Bible. There's, it says there's a special person. Mean. And yet they say that we are the one who corrupt the Bible. It says they are a special, a very special person. Okay. It is a true prophet. It's found in chapter 42 of the book of the prophet Isaiah. The narrator of the video tells us that this is a prophecy about a very special person. God starts the chapter by drawing our attention to a very special person that he will send. He describes this person as my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one in whom I delight. According to Merciful Servant, verse 13 tells us that this special person will be a warrior. In Isaiah, God states that this special person will be a warrior and will go forth as a mighty man. He shall hold on, you you know I, I have I have a headset in my ears. You open a hole and then go forth as a mighty man. What happened? Hold on, hold on. Did you hear what he said? Did you did you did you hear? Did you hear how he get excited? I mean, I don't know what they eat before they make those videos. Look, look, look. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm going to go back a little bit. Listen how he say it. Look, look. What happened to this guy? Suddenly, as, as if he put gas there. Look. Be a warrior. In Isaiah, God states that this special person will be a warrior and will go forth as a mighty man. You scared the hell of me, man. What happened? Go forth as a What happened? You, from like low, sudden, like very excited because the light is big. Say it again. Say it again. It's like a circus. Will. Go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. He shall cry, yea, roar. He shall prevail against his enemies. Merciful Servant then tells his viewers that verse 13 is clearly a prophecy about Muhammad and not about Jesus. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, had to engage in many battles with the idol-worshipping enemies of God and ultimately prevailed against them. By comparison, Jesus did not triumph over his enemies. Jesus did not. Did you hear his scream? Jesus did not. Uh, you idiot. Jesus, he did. What is more overcome death? What is more by being in heaven right now, even in your stupid cult? Jesus in heaven. So how in the world he did not prevail against his enemy? Imagine everybody die. All my enemies die and I am right now in heaven. And I did not prevail. If he is the one who did not prevail, so who is the one who prevailed? Muhammad who is in the grave? Who the worm ate him? Who even the Muslim did not bury him for three days and the Hadith says he stink? And he, he, even the companion said, bury your friend. He is stinky.
And I have many videos about it. So who is the one who prevailed? The dead or the, wooden, the living one? Potatoes. Continue, brother. Continue. Hmm. He prevailed against them. By comparison, Jesus did not triumph over his enemies. According to Christians, he was crucified by them. Moreover, Jesus wasn't interested in fighting. He was not a man of war. He was a pacifist, according to the Bible. He said such things as, For all who draw the sword will die by the sword. And You idiot. That's mean, if you kill, you will be killed. It doesn't mean that he is against using the sword. It's mean that justice will come. The one who kill, he will be killed. And this is how your prophet die, like, a, you know, by poison. <laughs> the tongue is coming out. He killed many people, specifically Jews. He hid them. And then a Jewish woman, she put a little, little tiny poison for him. And Muhammad died and his tongue came out and his saliva is all over the place. How he prevailed by that? Huh. My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight? Hold on, don't you Muslim you say that Jesus never said I am God worship me? Hmm? How he is not God and he is saying my kingdom is not of this world. So where is his kingdom? So you idiot, you just convinced me that Jesus must be God and he prevailed because he have a kingdom, higher kingdom. This is the kingdom for a human being. My kingdom is out of this world. I am from above. That's what he said. You are from here, from this earth. I am from above. That's what Jesus said. You got yourself busted again. Continue. Muslims in the comments section praised Allah for such a clear proof that Muhammad was a true prophet. Are the rest of you convinced yet? You know, when someone's making an argument about something that could affect your entire life and your eternal destiny, it's always a good idea to carefully examine the argument. And when it's a Muslim apologist making the argument, you really, really need to take a closer look because some of these guys will do just about anything to convince you that Muhammad was a prophet. Notice something peculiar about this graphic of Isaiah 42, 13. According to Merciful Servant, the verse is about the special person who would be a warrior for God. But the subject has been removed and replaced with an ellipsis, the dot, dot, dot. You use an ellipsis when you intentionally omit some content. Normally, you omit this content because it's irrelevant to the point you're making. But you should never use an ellipsis to completely change the meaning of the text. If Merciful Servant is being truthful with his viewers, then when we go to the actual verse to see what's been removed, we're going to find that the subject is this special person who will somehow turn out to be Muhammad. However, if the subject of the verse is someone else entirely and Merciful Servant deliberately removed the name in order to completely distort the meaning of the text, we can only conclude that he is attempting to deceive his viewers because he knows that they won't bother to fact check anything he's saying. Let's see what the verse actually says. I'll use the same translation that Merciful Servant uses. Isaiah 42, 13. The Lord shall go forth as a mighty... Look what, look what David did now. Like what David did, like what? So the Muslim they claim that Muhammad is the Lord. He is Yahweh, he is God. I mean, have you ever heard of a fraud bigger than the fraud of Islam? Imagine, I mean, what, why he will, what he will lose if he keep the two words in the verse? I mean, it's a verse. You see, we are not asking him to quote the verse before it or the verse after it. The same verse. Why you take the say the first two words in the verse? Why? Let me guess why. Ah, uh, he is out of ink, maybe. Ah, uh, he is out of uh, dignity, possible. He is full of a fraud, very possible. He is a Muslim. That is the truth. 
So look at the stupidity of a 3 million subscriber channel. They took the word where it says Yahweh, God. And they claim that this Yahweh God is Muhammad. We found that God is Muhammad in the Bible. I mean, I don't know what those people eat. And I do not know what kind of diarrhea they have after they eat. But their diarrhea is so big. And the poopoo is all over. Tell us more, David, brother David. Tell us more. Isaiah 42, 13. The Lord shall go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. He shall cry, yea, roar. He shall prevail against his enemies. In Isaiah, God states that this special person will be a warrior and will go forth as a mighty man. Not again, man. You scared the hell off me again. I have the headset in my ears. Go forth and you're like, what's wrong with this guy? What he is eating? Unbelievable. And look how excited he is with the lie. I mean, you know, this is not the Quran. This is not the Quran. So we cannot say, we cannot say, it's impossible to say, that the Muslim, they will say as excuse, uh, the guy who got this copy of the Bible, the God ate the verse, like it says in the Hadith about the Quran. This is the Bible. And obviously, uh, goats, they have a lot of appetite toward the Quran, not the Bible. There is nowhere in the world that says there is a, a goat eating the Bible. But your books and the Sahih Hadith says that Aisha said that when the Prophet was dying, a goat ate the Quran. So, a special person, go forth on, as a mighty man. It says there here, you idiot, as a mighty man, as. If he is a man, then why it says as a mighty man? Hmm. Anyway, okay, continue. Hmm? God, he humbled himself. He came as a man. This is not about Jesus. This is about Muhammad. Muhammad became God suddenly. I mean, those people, they are willing to do anything to prove that Muhammad, the fraud, is a prophet. Even in the book which they accused to be corrupt. You believe it? Continue. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. He shall cry, yea, roar. He shall prevail against his enemies. The Lord shall go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. He shall cry, yea, roar. He shall prevail against his enemies. Um, who goes forth as a mighty man? A special person who turns out to be Muhammad? No, the Lord shall go forth as a mighty man. Lord here is in all caps. When you're reading the Old Testament and you see Lord in all caps, the Hebrew word for Lord there is Yahweh. Yahweh is the omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent creator of the universe. Yah see, uh, just to tell you something, to be honest, like if I'm going to repeat those words which David Wood, he said in English, I will spend like two hours to just to pronounce them. What, what he said? Let me hold on. What David said, I want to listen. I want to hear it. Yahweh. Yahweh is the omnipotent. Omnipotent? Okay. Omniscient, omnipresent creator of the universe. I have no idea what he's saying, to be honest with you. Uh, should I do the same as the Muslim? I agree. <laughs> Those words are new for me, to be honest with you. I don't know what they mean. Uh, this is, you know, actually it's good. I mean, I, for me, I'm, you know, uh, uh, you learn uh, English language is not my first language, but to be honest with you, I did not know what those three words mean. Eh, what I can do, but still I can do. I have a better TV stand for the TV stand of David Wood. You saw the TV stand, don't you? <laughs> Yahweh is the God of the Bible. So what did merciful servant do in this video?
He went to a verse that's about Yahweh. He took Yahweh out of the verse and replaced Yahweh with dot, dot, dot. Then he told his viewers who trust him to always tell them the truth that this verse is about the special person that God would send as a prophet. It's about Muhammad. You have to be a special kind of dishonest to do something like this. No, no, I don't agree with you, David. Just hold. You have to be a special kind of donkey. You have to be certified one. Have what they call the things they put for the donkey in his feet. We cannot call them shoes, right? What they call them? I don't know. I mean, this guy, even even those, he don't have them. He's a donkey, but even those things in his feet, he don't have them. I mean, I mean, think about it. Don't you think that somebody will go and read it and somebody will check it out and then somebody will find that you are a fraud? Hmm. And yet they claim that we are the one who lie. I wonder how, I wonder why, why all of you are a bunch of lie, you know, support a lie. I don't know why all the Muslims, Allahu Akbar, brother. Not a single Muslim in the comment there of this video says to him, brother, this is stupid, this is not true. I mean, not even a single Muslim is honest to say to this guy, shame on you. You took the first two words from the Bible there, which is speaking about the God of the Christians. So, Muslim apologists are so desperate to find Muhammad in the Bible that they will gladly, shamelessly take verses that are clearly and indisputably about God and claim that they're about Muhammad. But it gets more interesting because Merciful Servant watched my video. How do I know that he watched oh, hold on. prophecies? But the Bible passages. Hold on, I, I did move the video mistakenly. Hold on, David, hold on. How do you know that? But hold on, did you hear what uh, uh, David was saying? What I jumped the video, hold on. Here. This David Wood is dangerous. Listen carefully what he was saying now. Clearly and indisputably about God and claim that they're about Muhammad. But it gets more interesting because Merciful Servant watched my video. How do I know that he watched my video? Okay, hold on. From now on, don't ever watch the video of David Wood unless he, because he would know that you are. <laughs> and look, guys, this guy is smart. So honestly, David is a smart. You know, there's there's many people, they like, uh, you know, for me, I don't really care. But, but David, obviously, he, he like he focuses on things which maybe me and you don't focus on. Look what he will say. Listen carefully. Well, in my video, I pointed out a typo in the title. Here goes. Merciful Servant posted a video titled Prophet Muhammad, S-A-W, this stands for Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, a phrase usually translated as peace be upon him, but which actually means Allah's prayers be upon him and peace. Prophet Muhammad in the Bible, truth, uncove. Sadly, uncove is not a word. That typo had been there for more than four years, but right after I posted my video, the typo was corrected. People who watched my video also flooded the comments section of Merciful Servant's video. All So he corrected him, and then this guy, he went and fixed it. <laughs> you know what? I think, David, he should work with Detective Columbus. <clears throat> <laughs> I'm really happy that we found the, in the Bible the Prophet Muhammad. The funny thing that we can find him in the Bible, but, but we cannot find him in the Quran. <laughs> I mean, shouldn't you first prove to me that Muhammad is a prophet from the Quran? I mean, have you ever heard of a prophet? He claimed that the baby is coming from the backbone of the man and the ribs of the women. Have you ever heard of a prophet prophesying? that where the sun set, he found the city in murky water, and the Muslim, they lie, they say, he did not say that. He is saying that Zulkarnain, he thought, and no. Here we go. This is your Yellow Pages book, and this is Muhammad speaking. Who is speaking? Muhammad. The one you found him in the Bible. Do you see it? 
I was sitting behind the messenger of Allah. S A W S. This is like the C C C in the time of the Hitler, you know, S S S. S A W S. Who was riding a donkey while the sun was setting? In the old days, like this is how they sing in English, right? Romantic, very romantic. I mean, look, we have two guys at the top of a donkey, Muhammad in the front. I'm not sure who's in the front, to be honest with you. It doesn't say. Uh, but let us assume Muhammad in the front. Ah, Muhammad in the back, it doesn't matter. But obviously, Muhammad is the, he's the leader, so he must be, uh, you know. So we are sitting. He is riding the donkey, and the guy is, is with him. Uh, he, while he is sitting in the donkey, he asked, do you know where this said? This is what was like an opera at that time, you know. The guy, uh, he answered the prophet, and his eyebrows like flying in the wind. I replied, Allah and his apostle know best. And you can imagine the eyebrows is going up, you know. And then he said, Muhammad. It's it in a spring of warm water. And here we have empty space, which means the guy he have a diarrhea. Like he was like, what the heck? Like he was empty, empty. There's nothing here. That's it. The story is over. The guy he shut up. He did not open his mouth and the story, like what happened after, after he told him that his son is set in the murky water. What did you say back? Didn't you say something? Hello? And you can imagine the voice of or the face of this guy after he heard the prophet saying the truth. Sharing the prophecy where the sun set. He was like, what the heck? What kind of a prophet this prophet is? I mean, what food he is eating? What a drink is he drinking? Hmm. No, no, Zibi. He did not say that, Zibi. You're lying, Zibi. You know those uh, people who make videos and they defend their, their their prophet, trying to make him look like a prophet. They remind me of the Pink Panther in the movie. The woman she is trying to teach him how to say hamburger, and they make fun of my English, by the way. Hamburger, they say hamburger. Hamburger, they say hamburger. The the verse says the Lord. How the Lord became a three dots. This is the hamburger of Islam. I wonder how. I wonder why. You told me about the sunset in Dubai. I turn my head, I turn it down, I turn it, turn it, turn it, turn it around, and all what I can see, a crazy Muhammad. Uh, drinking Pepsi. By the way, in the Middle East, Pepsi is not called Pepsi, it's called Bipsy. Bipsy, you know, we have Bipsy there. Uh, anyway. Now, how you, how you Muslims explain that you are saying these days that Muhammad is Yahweh, the God of the Jews? How you say that? Because this is exactly what they did in their video. They are committing shirk. Muslims are mushrikeen. Not only, brother, they kiss stones, they go around the stones. Okay, hold on. I don't want to make a comment about the stone because they will get offended. But let me explain to you the stone issue. I will give you a stony example. What is this? What? I don't want this shape. Hold on. I mean, what is this? The Kaaba is not round. Like, what's wrong? I don't want this shape. What is this? This is the Kaaba. Hey, finally, brother and sister. 
The brother, the Kaaba, let me make it bigger. What is this? This is small. How I'm going to draw their windows and doors. I mean, what's wrong with this guy? Let us make it big. Uh, <clears throat> the cube. The Kaaba, I mean the cube, by the way. Cube. I mean, have you ever... I was asking myself, why Allah, you want a cube? Huh? There's a connection between the cube and Cuba and Havana cigar. I don't know. I think those people, they are smoking too much. This Kaaba, brother, has a little tiny stones in the corner. Let me, let me draw for you the corner of the black stone. Hold on. Give me, give me a second to show you my skills in art. Here in this area, brother. And don't ask me why the shape looked like this. Okay, secret. And then inside this hole, there is little tiny dots, very tiny, seven or eight dots, you know. Those are the stones. There's no stone. According to Allah, he sent the full stone. Look like somebody break it. And I think the reason it's broke, I'm just thinking about a reason. I believe that once upon the time there was somebody he went to the black stone and he was angry from his mother-in-law and he started hitting the stone with his like he's like he very strong like Muhammad Ali do, 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 and the black stone became pieces otherwise I challenge any Muslim to tell me how in the world that Allah he sent a full stone and this stone is going to witness for you in the judgment day but yet this stone is gone there's a small tiny pieces and not only that they do waxing for it every week Maintenance. Do we maintenance to the stone of Allah? Can't Allah do maintenance to his stone? Anyway, the brother, we Muslims, brother, we go around this stone. How we go around this stone? Like this. Walking down the street. La 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 la. La 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 la. Like a circle. La la la. Walking down the street. Like a, like a circle around the stone. Eh, keep going, keep going. Until we go here. We go from here, we come from here. Then we go from here, then we go from here. Then we go from here, then we come from here. Then we go from here, then we come from here. And I'm not getting dizzy. We go from here, and then we come from here. And then we go from here, and then we come from here. And then we come from here, and then we... There is no GPS. It's not needed. It's a miracle. You will never get lost. Just go around the cube. There is no map, no, no GPS. Just, we go from here, they come from here. We go from here, we come from here. We go from here, and then in the way, we stop here, and we kiss the stone. And don't forget to cry. And yet they call you pagan. They call us pagans. Their religion is based on stones. Kissing stones, going around the stones, and we are the pagans. There's an old woman, they stop her in the airport of uh, Jeddah, coming to Mecca. They found with her whiskey, black label. Huh? The police, the custom, he said to her, you are in the age of my grandmother. Aren't you ashamed of to bring whiskey with you to the Hajj? She said to him, my son, I'm very old to walk around the Kaaba. He said, okay, what does this have to do with bringing whiskey? Well, I said to myself, I will drink two cups of whiskey and the Kaaba will go around me. <laughs> uh, the end of the joke. What the heck? I mean, why you want to go around the Kaaba? Drink whiskey, the Kaaba go around you. Very simple. Black table. This is Islam. Islam based on deceptions and lies, and the fraud. From the beginning to the end. Hmm? Prove me wrong. Actually, there is a there is a friend of uh, what his name uh, Ahmadiyya, the founder of the Ahmadiyya, the one who claimed to be the Messiah, the fraud. <laughs> His his a friend. He do drugs. He's a hashash. You know, he's a he's a hashish guy. 
uh, this guy, I think he have a story, as I remember, that the Kaaba went around him too, which is true. Yeah. Anyway, so I'm not going to keep, uh, you know, going for long. I just wanted to share those two videos with you and about uh, Corona virus, which is discovered first time in Mecca, in Jeddah, in the Arabian Peninsula, in during the Hajj time. Uh, and now we have it. Now you have it around the earth. Now it's spreading in China. Now it's spreading everywhere. And the, the, the thing is, the Muslims, they claim that nothing happened in this earth except by the will of Allah. So why Allah, he put the coronavirus for the best people he loved? Because first time it appeared, it was there in Mecca. If this is made by Allah, why Allah decide to kill the Muslims in Mecca? That is a question. Muhammadan need to answer it. All right. And what we learned today from the video we saw, uh, which is done by Brother David Wood, about uh, Muhammad in the Bible, is an you know a clear example of the fraud. You see, when we say Paul mentioned in the Quran, how we prove it? We go and read the commentary. We don't put dots. We don't add words. We don't take words and put the word Paul. We go, we say the commentary, it says that this is Paul and this is uh, 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 Peter and this is John. Their book saying that. The Muhammadan, they are following a false god which is permitting them to do deception all of the top comments now draw attention to the deception let's look at a few of the top comments we'll just start at the top who's here after david wood's video i read it before david got to the point and knew that he removed the word lord wow what a way to change the verse and context and deceive people peace and blessings upon david wood who speaks the truth. Merciful servant, you're just wrong. Come at me, bro. I think David Wood is gonna destroy your channel because most of us here because of him. I actually disagree with that. If you have three million subscribers who have been trained all their lives to mindlessly accept anything their Muslim leaders say, even when their leaders are lying to them, there's no way I'm destroying your channel. Merciful Servant will continue to grow because there are too many people who love being lied to. Hi, Merciful Servant. If I were you, I will quickly delete this video away as I'm exposed by David Wood. Nice job committing shirk to lie to your viewers. If you read the full verse, you have declared that Muhammad is God. The Lord shall go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. He shall cry, yea, roar. He shall prevail against his enemies, Isaiah 42, 13, KJV. Lord is Yahweh, the name of God in the Bible in the original Hebrew text. Read the full verse. This was about God. The Lord shall go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. He shall cry, yea, roar. He shall prevail against his enemies, Isaiah 42, 13, KJV. One, you can't use the Bible to prove a point if you think the Bible is corrupt. Two, you omitted the first part of the verse. The subject is the Lord, Yahweh, not a person who will come as a prophet. Thanks for being dishonest and deceiving your viewers. Acts Apologetic 17 brought me here. He exposed you through your lies. Change your name to the lying servant. Your deception is exposed by David Wood. This just keeps going. Now, we try to give the benefit of the doubt when we can. Whoever made the video about Isaiah 42 deliberately lied. Someone read verse 13, saw that it was about God, removed God from the verse, and then claimed that the verse is about Muhammad. Someone did that. That person is a deceiver and a mushrik, someone who commits shirk. But we can give the benefit of the doubt and say, maybe someone else made the video that Merciful Servant posted, but Merciful Servant wasn't aware of the deception. 
that's fine, but if Merciful Servant posted the video in ignorance, not knowing that it contained lies and blasphemy, what should have happened after people exposed the video in the comments section and he watched my video? If he had had an ounce of integrity, he would have removed the video and issued a public apology. Instead, the video is still on the channel. It hasn't been corrected. It's still misleading people. It's still calling Muhammad the God of the Bible. So, Merciful Servant is fully aware that a video on his channel contains lies and that it deifies Muhammad, and yet he keeps the video where it is. Five quick takeaways and we're done. First, Muslims claim that Islam is the religion that shuns idolatry and shirk, associating partners with God. But this is nonsense, because for 14 centuries, Muslims have been treating Muhammad like God and even calling him God. Second, deception is foundational in Islam. It takes deception to remove God from a verse and then tell people that the verse is about Muhammad. That is deliberate deception, and it too has been going on for 14 centuries. Third, when we talk about Muslims lying to support their religion, we're not talking about random Muslims. This goes up to their most popular apologists and their most popular channels. Why do Islam's most popular speakers and channels lie for their religion? No, oh, come on, David. I mean, the Prophet said you can lie in three cases. To your wife, eh? even the wife, I mean, how decent this cult is. Even the wife, I lie to her. I mean, what kind of religion this religion is? Ibladar and sister. Today we are going to give you a speech about the art of lying. Lie is haram in Islam, little brother. You are lying to your wife. This is number one, except sin. Hmm. Who would like to marry a Muslim? Who would like to marry a Muslim? Be honest with me. A person who believed that his God allowed him to lie to you. The Prophet said, it is not lawful. I love it when they say lawful. Those, this person, he law what is lawful and law not full. This is lawful. Your husband lying to you is lawful. It's full of law. This is a very lowly, low, low, low. Me. Me. La, 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 la. Oh, oh. You can lie to your wife. And after you lie to her, she will give you five. You can fool her and feel holy you can deceive her and this is not a bully you can lie and say goodbye and this is the way of islam say please hi i'm so so grateful to the wisdom and the ethic of the prophet now i will have a wife in my bedroom and I will lie to her all day long. And she will lie to me all day long. And we will enjoy lying to each other. How romantic. Honey, would you please like to lie to me? Or I lie to you now? You start first. Ah, uh, Christian Prince, you are my husband and I really love you. What a big fat liar you love me. That's a big fat lie. Oh, it's okay. The prophet here allow you. Uh, okay. It's my turn now. What is that, man? What is this? Lying to your wife? If you are a liar with your wife, you are truthful with who? Hmm. It is not lawful to lie except in three cases. Three cases only? Oh, here we go. Again, three cases. Muhammad is stuck with number three. The Trinity God, the Trinity religion, the Trinity prophet. Allah, Muhammad, Jibreel. 
Muhammad he say assalamu alaikum he say it three time he say Allahu Akbar he say it three time Allah he allow you to lie three time not four three time do ablution you have to wipe your face your hands your you know three time so the first one is lying to your wife which is very grateful I'm very grateful for this advice now I feel comfortable I was going I mean I'm not I did not get married because I'm afraid to tell the truth to my wife it's scary you tell her the truth now I can lie I will lie I will never feel guilty number two uh, lie during war uh -huh. see the Muslims they've been taught that Islam is in war with the Christians and the Jews and the Hindus and the Buddhas everybody so lying during war this is war is lawful some people might think that when they say war mean that we are now uh, chopping the head of each other well if they get the opportunity they would do it trust me but they are weak you know now, do you think really if uh, Saudi Arabia or Turkey they have the power of America or the you know and there's nobody can stop them they will not force everybody to convert to Islam you are mistaken they will do it immediately so lying during war and then lie in order to bring a peace. it doesn't say by the way bring peace it says to fix things with problem between people so we lie to uh, to people too to fix problem. Okay, I will give you an example. I am a I am the king of Jordan. My name is Muhammad Hussein, and there is million of people in the street. They are struggling for food, saying death to the king, death to the king. And this is a problem. Will cause a problem. Now it's time for the king to lie. I will go in the balcony. I will say, my people. I just receive an inspiration from Allah that there is a lot of zucchini and a lot of shish kebab is going to fail from the sky and nobody will be hungry after today no more. Go back home please and forget about it. This is how you can fix the problem by lying. This is Islam. So if you are surprised why they lie, Obviously, you do not know what Islam is about. Right? Uh, we have uh, Mr. Jubran, who, who is a very weird person. He says things sometimes very crazy. Look what he said. I want to show you how some people, because, you know, they are living in certain countries. I think he is, this guy is Syrian. Uh, but it's them, the American, who forefathers created the Islam why the text move hold on what happened where is the text go okay uh, created this Islam and today Trump does represent this words war world Muhammad how how Trump I mean look at this people how crazy what did Trump have to do with, with Muhammad he just came two years ago this guy he was a swimming in his swimming pool all his life he became a president just two years ago so now you want to blame him for everything you have in your let us blame the Jews. <laughs> Stupidity is amazing. Stupidity is amazing. What Trump have to do with this? I mean, are you crazy or what? Hello? Let us blame the Jews. Let us blame the Jews. Let us blame the Jews. Uh, you know, this way. You know, in the Middle East, actually, me myself, when I was in the Middle East, you know, you, you are under the influence. You know, I was a kid, and, you know, it, they teach you that everything that they blame the Jews. To the point, the first time I saw a Jew, first time ever in my life I saw a Jew, I was looking at his back to see if he had a tail. Because they told us they are pigs and monkeys. So I understand the situation of this person, Gibran. He is under the influence of where he is coming from, where he's born. But my friend Gibran, wake up. When Muhammad was killing and slaughtering people, and when the Turkish, the Ottoman Empire, they came to your country and they slaughtered the Christians, and they slaughtered the Armenian, and when they slaughtered the Kurdish, Trump was not as born yet.
Actually, Trump is supporting Muslims, in case you do not know. Do you know how many times Trump he said he was going to put sanctions in China because they discriminate the Muslims in China? But Trump, he did not put one sanctions on China because they discriminate the Christians. He never mentioned the discrimination of the Christian in China. Go check it out. I we don't understand. Yeah, you are the one who understand. Hmm. At that time, it was England. What England? England. <laughs> Stupidity is amazing. Anyway, <clears throat> uh, so uh, my advice for everybody here: never be surprised when you see the Muslims lying to you about anything. Because those people, they have legally, officially licensed to lie to their own family first. You see, anything is built on lies is a fraud. Do we agree? If a marriage is based on a lie, it's mean it is a fraud. Tafsir Ibn Kathir by who? Uh, tafsir Al Basit by Al Wahidi. My friend, uh, you know, you ask me questions, which is very funny. Because what is accepted by a Muslim, he will be rejected by the second one. You know, when we say Muslims, as if you are saying those Muslims, they agree with things. The Islam is the most stupid, confused religion. And any Muslim, he feels that this book is getting him busted, he will reject it right away. Do you know that the number of those who reject the total hadith of Muhammad is growing by millions every year? Because it's in, embarrassing. So right now there's hundreds of millions of Muslims, they reject the hadith, not only tafsir. The hadith, Muhammad's speech, is rejected. Why? Because it's embarrassing. So when you say, do they accept this, do they accept that? You know, we show them Al-Bukhari, they say we didn't accept it. Which is the most authentic book day for them. Actually, I have recorded, you know, many Muslims who called me before, and it's online, where the Muslims accuse the Quran itself to be corrupted because they cannot accept what is written there. So let us make it clear. Any book is embarrassing to Muslims, they will say we don't accept it automatically all right <clears throat> uh, mr. Ramon he is saying please uh, CP explain to us that God he created the wicked to punish them you see uh, uh, if somebody would, I don't know like if you are being smart or you are playing games uh, God he created us all of us to be good as an example, God, he created Adam not to be wicked. And then when Adam, he committed sin, Adam was punished. So Adam was, or he became wicked in a certain point. <laughs> Correct? That's what the verse is saying. God, he created all of us to be his children. He created Adam and Eve actually to believe in heaven not to even to be out heaven which means he designated them to be living a very beautiful life but then the wicked human being decide to be wicked so what do you do people like you when they say that i don't know why you don't use your brain you're trying to make that the one who is making them wicked is god but the god he did not do that he created you to be decent and he gave you a freedom of a choice. And he told you, don't do this. Otherwise, you will be wicked. He warned you, not only he let you alone, he gave you, he gave you orders to say, this is the guideline. Don't, don't go there. Don't do this. But a human being, always he decides to be foolish. 
and he tried to make the words of God upside down as he wished to fabricate his own agenda. Correct? As an example, you know, me, me, you, all of us. I can be wicked right now. I can go in the street and start killing people. I can go and rape a woman. You know, you can be wicked. This is a choice you do. It's not God making you wicked. So either we are honest when we ask a question or we are people who play games and the questions meant to play games, to flip the truth upside down. In Islam, no. In Islam, the opposite. Muhammad, he claimed that anything you do is by Allah plan. It is your destiny. Even if you are an infant, as an example, if you have adultery, fornication any adultery you do is not your choice it is something Allah he wrote in your book in your destiny and you have to do it's not a choice of doing or not it is a must to do read this is the Muslim translation not mine and this is Sahih Muslim hadith number 2657 very Sahih Every human being, Allah, he wrote for him how much adultery he will do, he must do. Which means, Allah is making you literally wicked. You have no choice to do or not. In different hadith, Muhammad, he said the following. Let us see. <clears throat> Where is the hadith? Here we go. Here Muhammad, this is in Sahih Bukhari, is explaining to you how when he created you, and the, and the creation is very funny, look at the science of the Prophet. Look at the science of the Prophet. Allah, Messenger, the truthful, the truly inspired, said, each one of you is gathered in the womb of his mother for 40 days, as what? As a semen. You are in your mother belly. Actually, it doesn't say even womb, by the way. It says botni ummihi. Botan means belly. Or it can be stomach. It can be used for stomach. It can be used for belly. So you are collected in the stomach or the belly of your mother for 40 days. Let me, let me, uh, uh, Let me find uh, a better hadith than this one. Hold on. More clear. Because in the translation, they play with it. You see, I use Muslim translation to get them busted with their translation. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Look at this. This is coming from Sahih al-Bukhari, this hadith. It says, The truthful, the receiver of the truth informed us, saying, The creation of you, as a human, is gathered in the form of semen, in the womb of your mother. Hmm? Doesn't say womb again, it says button which means belly or stomach, as a semen for 40 days, science. Muhammad, he discovered that you are a semen for 40 days. So, you know, your mother, she went to the clinic after two weeks. The doctor, he put like the headset to hear what is in the stomach, because you're in the stomach now, as the Hadith says. And what are you doing? You are on vacation. You are still semen. Hello, semen? 
Simon, do you hear me? Hello? Simon. Okay, uh, um, uh, lady, you have now uh, semen for the last three weeks in your stomach. That is science. But according to the stupid science today, they are stupid, you know, those scientists. Uh, sperm or semen can live maximum of five days. Not 40 days. But guess what? I think at that time, people, they were more hot. I mean, it's a desert, man. And semen can live longer, man. Actually, they can age more, man. 40 days. Muhammad, he's stuck with the number 40 now. And then he become a clinging thing. Uh, what a clinging? It says alaqa. You know, he became a clot for a similar period, 40 days. And then he became a lump in a, of a flesh like that. This is 120 days. 40 by 40, uh, 40 plus 40 plus 40. And then the angel will write. Uh, hold on. Anyone see something weird here? Anyone notice something stupid here? Allah sent an angel who breathes the life into it. What? 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 That's mean the angel who created you, not Allah. Because the breathe is life. Who is the one who is giving you life? The angel. Read with me. It's not me who's saying that. Any Muslim? I just discovered that the angel is the one who created you. It was not Allah, he did that, it remained about you. It was the angel he breathed, it was the angel he breathed, it was the angel who created you. Which one? Allah, he sent angel to breathe in your mommy? So now you are inside your mommy and you are a semen brother. And then the semen became uh, a clot. And then the, the, you know, the clot became a flesh of lump. And now it's time for breathing. <laughs> Who is doing that inside your mama? The angel brother. The angel is the creator. He is the one who gave you life. Have you ever heard of a stupid religion more than this? I mean, look at the and, and look at the details. Muhammad is like a fool. He cannot keep his mouth shut. The more he talks, the more he do poo poo. Muhammad is talking. Poo poo is all over the place. Would be very beautiful if we can give Muhammad a chance to be in YouTube for just half hour, man. If Muhammad is having a channel in YouTube, he will do this. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, YouTube is against me because they said uh, no children. And you, you know me. I like children. But first line, children who they are five or six years old first. Okay. Yeah, the cute one. Okay. In the front. Yeah, close to me. Yeah, get closer. What, what YouTube would do with Muhammad and the guy who is marrying children? What, what is that, man? Thank God that Santa Claus is not Muhammad, man. That's very dangerous. Children taking pictures and selfie with the Santa Claus. Now, here Muhammad, the angel after he created you, as you say, the angel is commanded to, to record four things about it. Four things like what? It's the provision, it's term of life in this world, the conduct, and whether he will be happy or miserable. I mean, even this one is written by Allah. I feel happy. It's Allah, he made me feel happy. I feel happy, very, very happy. 
I feel lucky, very, very lucky. Thank you Allah, thank you Allah for making me very happy, laughing at you, laughing at you. How lucky. I mean, have you ever heard of a stupid God more than this? Based on this, Allah, he wrote for me that the Christian prince, he will open YouTube channel, he will write books about Islam, he will spank Allah 24 hours, 7 days a week. Mean, how beautiful. And then, look what will happen. And by the side whom, uh, one beside whom, there's no true God. And they put the God is small. They knew that their God is false. Look, small God. Verily, one you would be, be perform the action of doer of, of, of Jannah, which means heaven, until only there is a cupid between him and heaven. And then, uh, what is for ordained? I like this word for ordinate. Hold on. For ordinate. What, 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 what? For ordinate would come to pass. So the guy is almost going to heaven. Almost in the door of the heaven. And then what is for ordinate would come to pass. And he would perform the action of the inmate. Inmate? Why we are in jail? In the inmate of hell until he interact. La, 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 la. What the heck? So you enter hell not because you are good or bad, but because Allah He wrote for you for ordained behavior. Have you ever heard of a pupu bigger than this? So why you became a Muslim and why I will become a Muslim? Because at the end of the day, what Allah He wrote for me for ordained will 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 be accomplished. This is a verse from the Quran. The Quran the Quran. The Quran is crazy. Quran. Here we go. Stupid making himself a prophet. So what we understand from this? That you are praying to Allah all your life doing the act of people of heaven as you see you would perform one of you would perform the action of the of people of heaven which means you are a very good person you hate christian prince you want to kill him etc until there is only one cupid between him and jannah just one a cupid man it's like three feet man he's almost in the door man and what happened then what is for ordained would come to pass and then he would perform the action of inmate of hell and he enter hell mr das what is this is it true that the angel of dead Ezra is as israel got paper from the tree of allah with the name there's many stories about uh, you know the bend in the story there's tons of stories about how allah he sent the angel of death as an example the angel of death was Allah uh, once sent by Allah but I have a I have a good news for you about the angel of death when Allah he sent the angel of death to Moses Moses he hit him he uh, Moses he uh, he took a karate class uh, I think Moses he went to China you know he learned some uh, Kung Fu Uh, let me see the hadith hold on so anyway he uh, the angel of death he came to kill uh, or take life of uh, uh, Moses but Moses he played karaoke you know karaoke like ching kong let me let me uh, see the story hold on and by the way this story contradict everything muhammad saying 
because if you are saying everything written for us even including our death and we how long we will live then how Moses was able to change the date of his death stupid story uh, let us see <clears throat> I'm trying to find the hate in English. I have the hate in Arabic. But sometime this website is not really good. To find things. There we go. Abu Huraira, this is Sahih Muslim, very Sahih. Reported Abu Huraira that Allah Messenger said that when the angel uh, of death came to Moses, uh, he uh, uh, responded to the call of Allah, i.e. prepared for the death. He told Moses, Musa, prepare to die. Moses, he gave a blow at the eye of the angel of death. And he knocked it out like boing, 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 boing. Are you there, uh, my friend, the one who's asking me? Now, there is no way this is not a true story. I mean, if a Christian prince, he said this is a story, the Muslim, they will be laughing at me to death. Christian prince, look how stupid he is. Look what he's saying. He believed that. The, imagine if Christian prince, one day he come to YouTube and he says, the angel of death came to me yesterday and he wanted me to die and I did knock his eye and I give him a blue brush. and I knocked his eye out like boing 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 hmm. what do you think the Muslim will say about Christian Prince hmm? how come they don't laugh The angel of death, those angels, they have 600 wings, whatever, like wings, wings, whatever. and then a guy, his name is Moses. I mean, I'm telling you, it's good to be a Jew. You see what the Jews can do? And that's why, actually, I decided to learn Karaki. Kara, okay. Ching, ha, hoo. Hold on, the angel of death is in my door. Listen, angel of death. I'm warning you, one more step you get close to me, I'm going to break your arm and I'm going to break your five fingers as a Lee he did in the movie, it's called uh, Suku Suku and then after that, I'm going to hit you in your eye and your eye will come out like a Lulu. Do you hear me, Angel? I heard you. And trust me, I will never get close to you. All right, so we have a deal. Now you know what's going to happen. And I'm just warning you because by law, I have to tell you that I have a black belt before we start the fight. Hmm. By the way, I have, a, I have a black belt, but not Karake one. I bought it from Walmart. Honestly, I'm not lying. I play Karake very good, you know. Hmm. So anyway, this is stupid cult is beyond imagination, beyond stupidity. Please stop. What what I'm doing? What happened? Please stop. What is that? Oh boy. How many of you here today is new in our channel? If you are new, don't forget to subscribe and then unsubscribe. And I will tell you why, the reason. Because if you subscribe, my friend, Allah will hit you. Because you are subscribing to Christian Prince. Then you unsubscribe, Allah will be happy with you and he will send you a reward. And you can't imagine what is the reward of Allah. Panties, naked women, boys, <laughs> boys. Yeah, they are white too. I mean, what do you want more? Hmm? So my advice to you, if you are new to our channel, please subscribe and unsubscribe because Allah will double your reward. So look, he will give you minus one for subscribing. 
but by unsubscribing he will double double for you so now you get plus two so look at this calculate it please subscribe and subscribe subscribe and subscribe you will become a millionaire by the end of the day hmm. the logic of Muhammad oh man and then look after this poor angel his eye came out from his head uh, he went to Allah and he said to him you send me you send me to a servant who don't like to die what you send me to your servant who doesn't like to die uh -huh. and he knocked out my eye uh -huh. honestly we can make an opera of this and look at the conversation how extremely legitimate the angel he went to Allah and he told him you send me why you don't call him I mean what why you have to you have to go there I mean what, what he went to Allah he went back to Allah do you see it okay that means Allah is located in a location and the address is known at least to the angel he went back to Allah and then he said to him, You send me to a servant who does not like to die. So, brother and sisters, all what you need to do, if in case you like to live forever, just don't like to die. That's it. Don't like to die. Ah, so those people who they are dying every day, they like to die. Because obviously, if you don't like to die, you're still alive. The angel will go back to Allah and say, hey, you send me today to Johnny and Tony and Noni, and none of them would like to die. So I cannot take their, their life. And one of them, he knocked my eye. That's so good to be true. So beautiful. Actually, I feel like crying. Not because I'm cutting onion or something, no. But that story is very, very touchy. Very touchy and very itchy. Hmm. it must be a true story we have to admit and then look what Allah he did Allah brother he restored the eye of the angel if 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 in the proper place oh hold on hold on this proper thing is fishy for me what do you mean in the proper place like was Allah going to put it in his bum what do you mean exactly in the proper place I'm, I'm trying to understand why you are added the word a proper place. I mean, Allah will restore the eye where you think is going to be restored to his nose, his toes, his bum. Proper place. Mm -hmm. Look how much details here we have. Very genius. Because, okay, where Allah he restored the eye, maybe he put it in his forehead, like in the movie. <laughs> what the heck is this? This is genius, man. This is very super, super, super smart. Okay. And then you can read the story. I mean, look at this story. The guy, he went there, he told him, hit the ox, and whatever here under your hand, you will live, blah, blah, blah. blah, blah. Ox? Cow? Okay, I'm going to grow a cow in front of my house. I will, I will bring in the most hairy cow. Oh boy. Anyway, guys, I think it's time for us to go. I will try to come back again. How many of you want me to come back again after a few hours? Honestly, I have a lot of work to do. I'm just taking it from my price, priceless time because you to me, you are priceless. And I love you all. And I love your company and I enjoy really having this beautiful family from around the world where anytime go online right away hundreds if not thousands they join us uh, if I can come again later I will be happy to do so all right uh, 
and for sure I will update you by posting in Patreon or posting in Minds or in Facebook or even in Instagram. Don't forget please to subscribe to your friends and uh, there, uh, uh, there is a channel I would like to ask you to, to subscribe to it, which is my other channel. But this one, we talk about things have nothing to do with Muhammad and his crazy zucchini stuff. You know, zucchini, tomato, potato. It's called the quality of life, M27, which is taken from the Bible, the M27. It's a verse about Sabbath is made, uh, made for the man, not the man made for Sabbath. So if you like to join us there, soon I'm going to make more videos because I'm, you know, I did a lot of videos here in that channel. I'm not really doing much. So subscribe so you can join us in that channel and you can be part of the family there if you care to be part of it. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm saying we love you too. Thank you. Okay. Thank God I'm not a Muslim because even my wife, if I'm Muslim, she can lie to me. She will say to me, I love you when she hate me. Unbelievable. All right. Uh, thank you, Eric. Thank you. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, here uh, we try to make things simple. We try to do share education as much as we can. In the same time, we are having fun and good time. It's kind of a comedy show, but with a lot of education, which means this is a teacher who teach you without making you getting bored. You will never be yawning here. Oh, hold on. Did I say yawning? Oh, boy. I should not say that. Because you know that Allah, he hate those who do yawning. That means Allah, he love you guys because uh, he hate... Uh, uh, the people who do yawning, but he like the one who do sneezing, which is very, very, very beautiful. The messenger of Allah said, the sneeze is from Allah. Oof, 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 oof. It's not from Corona. It's not Corona reason. You sneeze, is it from Corona? No, it's from Allah. And yawning is from shaitan. If, 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 look how dangerous this is stuff, brother. How, what the heck? This is crazy. Uh, 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 it's you. Uh, thank you, Allah. So sneeze is from Allah. And yawning from shaitan. So one of you yawn, let him cover his mouth with his hand. For when he say, ah, ah, shaitan laugh inside his opening. <laughs> oh, I mean. Okay, hold on. I have to do some art. I was going to go. You guys, I hate you. Look what you did to me. All right. Let me try to explain to you in a visual way. Because some of us, they don't understand how beautiful this speech is. Now, this is you. Okay, this is you, and this is, look how big your nose, man. I mean, have you ever heard of a nose like this? What's wrong with this nose? What kind of a drawing is drawing? This look like an instant pot, cooking stuff. Hold on, let me clean it out. I mean, I don't know what happened. Guys, don't blame me. I'm a very good artist, but uh, uh, it's the pen. It's the pen, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> okay. And then here you have a nose, yeah. Now we have a nose. What the heck with this nose? Look like a like a, a the, the new car, electronic car. Anyway, so your eyes here, and your mouth is here, brother. This is your mouth. You open your mouth when you do yanim. Shaitan, he jump inside your mouth immediately, like bingo, bing. He is here now. This is Shaitan. He is inside your mouth and he is like, ha, 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 unbelievable. <laughs> this is so exciting. True. This is, this is, this is, this is true. This is true. The Prophet said so. The Prophet said so. 
I mean, how dare you even not to believe it? You yawn, brother. Now, hold on. The Muslim, they have articles about the Prophet teaching us hygiene and to protect ourselves and others from viruses. Really? The Prophet did that? Yes. They say to you, look, they quote from the story only this part just to show you the deception. How much they love to deceive. They don't show the rest because people will die laughing at what is he's saying. They show you only this part saying, the prophet said, brother, that if one of you do yanin, ask him to cover his mouth. And then here is gone, this part. Don't mention this part because people will die laughing at the prophet. So they make a huge article, a study, about the scientific facts and how the Prophet, he knew that when you do yawning, liquid will come from your mouth and it might hit the person in front of you or spread all, all over. But this is not about this. This is about shaitan, brother, jumping in your mouth, uh, making your mouth a jacuzzi, and he is laughing at you from inside your hole. Now we have to admit, Allah, he loves sneezing. This is why his favorite month is December and January and February, because a lot of people get cold. Allah, he hate yani. This is why he don't like the time between 10 to 1 a.m. in the morning because people they get tired they start yawning obviously yawning is from shaitan not because you are tired it's proven to be true brother scientifically to be true right so <clears throat> shaitan inside your opening I mean this shaitan is everywhere you cannot even open the thing when you go to the bathroom man by the way uh, there's a video you should watch it it's about uh, it's a it's a sheikh teaching the Muslims when you go to the bathroom because you don't see a prayer shaitan he play with your anus yes brother he go inside it he'll block it uh, let me see if I can find you the video before I leave <clears throat> Uh, we cannot find it. Hold on. Yeah, here we go. This is the video here. <clears throat> it's called Make, Sh Make Shaitan Pro uh, Fart. Watch it. He explained to you when you go to the bathroom how Shaitan go inside your anus and he block it. And you squeeze you to e e and it doesn't come. Why? Because shaitan is inside. True story. The prophet said, the prophet said, here's what he say. He will say, the prophet said, because people start laughing, dying, laughing. He saw to shut them up, he says, the prophet said, the prophet said, so, which means show respect, you stupid. Like, what's wrong with you? So obviously, shaitan in Islam, he's all over. He's in your in the anus of a human being, he's around the penis, he's in your nose, he's sleeping in your nose, he's he pissed in your ears. All of this is recorded by Muhammad. And must be true so my friends my family my brothers my sisters I want to say thank you for being here I'm very grateful don't forget please to download this video as soon as we finish I'm not going to keep it all the videos actually the previous videos they will be deleted soon so if you want to download them please take your opportunity and download them as soon as we finish or the other one already this one will take maybe 20 minutes to be ready to download or 15 minutes depending on YouTube and please download it share it with your friends in your channel because soon I'm going to delete it thank you very much may the Lord bless you all Christ is our provider he is our Savior he is the only one we can be proud about not about ourselves we are sinners none of us is qualified to say I'm proud of me but all of us we can be qualified to say we are children of God and to be proud to be following the Messiah, our Savior. 
He is the one who raised our qualification. He is the one who make us qualified to be in heaven. He is the one, not us, who make us qualified to be named as the children of God. He is the one who make us qualified to be peacemaker and people of love. Love your enemy, bless those who hate you. And we love the Muslims, and we will never hate them. Because then, if we do so, Satan is the winner. Fight the deception of Islam. Fight the devil of Islam. Fight the cult of Islam. Never stand down and let Islam deceive your children. But in the same time, stay loving to Muslims. Help them. They are deceived. They do not know what they are doing. They've been promised false promises. They are like people who they are drunk and they need your help to wake up. And this is exactly what we do here. The Lord is our helper. So we can help the Muslims not to put them down. The Messiah, he said, I came for the sick. And we are here to help the sick. We are not here to kill the sick. That is not our target. So I want to say, th say thank you for all of you. I'm so happy to have you. So proud of you, of your support. And I believe that the Lord, he blessed me with many things. And the best thing is love of people who they are around me each time I do my work. Thank you. God bless you. Christ is Lord. Islam is false. And see you soon again. Bye-bye.